October 1989, new general appendix instructions will be issued for the operation of power doors. In this short film, we shall be looking at the practical application of these new instructions for trains operated by a driver and a conductor. The principal changes concern the testing of doors, the removal of the door interlock lights on certain types of stock, and the requirement for the conductor to observe doors from the platform. When carrying out full preparation of his train, the conductor or trainman must thoroughly test all doors. He enters the adjacent cab, inserts his door key and turns the key switch to the on position. He then puts up the door release on both sides of the train from the door control panels at this end. After opening the adjacent doors by means of local door switches where provided, he makes his way through the train opening each door by the passenger door open buttons. If these are not provided, he would of course open all doors from the door control panels. He must check that each external hazard light is illuminated on both sides of each vehicle and that door control panel covers are closed and locked in each vestibule. If any door is found to be isolated, the isolation must be removed unless the door in question is defective and correctly locked and labelled out of use. The conductor must ensure that door key switches in all other cabs are in the off position door keys removed and cab doors locked. Returning to the door control panels from which the doors were released, he now closes all doors by means of the door close button and checks that the door interlock light is illuminated. Where no door interlock light is provided, he checks the interlock circuit is made by giving the door test signal on the buzzer or bell. 3, pause 2, pause 1. A vehicle or unit must not enter service from a maintenance depot if any door does not function correctly or is already defective and locked and labelled out of use, or where an orange hazard light is defective. If the train is entering service from a stabling point, the conductor must ensure that any defective door is locked and labelled out of use. However, if all doors on one side of a vehicle are locked out of use, the train must not be taken into service. If a hazard light is defective, details must be entered in the repair book and operations control must be informed. Now let's look at the operation of the power doors once the train is in service. Should it be necessary to enter the cab from which the train is being driven in order to put the door key switch on, do not enter such cab until the driver has brought the train to a stand. When approaching a station, the doors must not be released until the train has stopped in the correct position at the platform. Be sure to release the doors on the correct side of the train. When the train is ready to depart, the conductor closes all power doors except his local door. He must now make a visual check from the platform that doors are not obstructed, that nobody is trapped by clothing and that it is safe to start. He must check the whole length of the train unless he obtains an indication from the platform staff that this check has been made. Having closed his local door, he gives the ready to start signal to the driver. He must, however, remain at his door control panel until the train has passed clear of the platform. 
When leaving the door control panel to carry out other on-train duties, he must close and lock the cover and turn the key switch to the off position, removing his key. The conductor may operate the doors from a door control panel in any vestibule, but not from a driving cab. However, with some classes of unit, which have no door control panels except in the driving cabs, he may operate the doors from any cab, but not the cab from which the train is being driven. The doors of a class 442 unit must normally be operated from the conductor's compartment. Now let's look at some of the problems of power door operation and how to deal with them. If an external hazard light remains illuminated after several attempts to close all doors, the conductor must visually check that all doors are closed. If a door remains open, he should close it manually. And if still defective, it must be isolated, locked out of use, and labelled as such. a door may be obstructed, in which case the conductor should again release the doors and remove the obstruction. If any door cannot be closed, the vehicle must be put out of use, the passengers move to another part of the train and operations control informed. In these circumstances, the train must be taken out of service at the first suitable location. Once the conductor is satisfied that it is safe to start the train, he may give the ready-to-start signal to the driver. However, a failure may mean that the starting bell or buzzer will be inoperative, in which case he must give the ready-to-start signal by means of a hand signal. If the door operating control fails at all positions, the conductor must use the emergency door release facility, allowing one door to be manually opened and closed. He must advise the passengers of this situation and the train must be taken out of service at the first suitable location. Don't forget that an external hazard light will remain illuminated on any vehicle where the passenger alarm system has been operated or where the fire equipment has been activated on a DMMU train. If the driver cannot get power after the ready to start signal has been given, it may be necessary to isolate the traction interlock. This action is removing a vital safeguard and a complete understanding must be reached between driver and conductor. Both men must take special care to look out when starting and to check that the train is in order. The traction interlock switch may only be operated in the cab from which the train is being driven and must be restored to normal before this cab is shut down. The traction interlock switch must only be placed in the isolate position to enable the train to proceed to the first suitable location where it may be taken out of service. No train may proceed beyond such a point with the traction interlock isolated, nor may any train enter service from a maintenance depot with the traction interlock unsealed. Should either the driver or the conductor be required to leave a passenger train which is not at a platform, he must be sure to close the local door behind him, unless he leaves the train through a door to which passenger access is denied.
If there is a cover on the external door control panel, this cover must be closed and locked after use. Before leaving his position, for any reason, the conductor must lock his door control panels on both sides, ensuring that the local door switches are in the closed position, turn the door key switch in the driving cab to off and remove his key. External doors must be closed at all times when the train is in motion, including during shunting or empty movement. When the train is stabled, all external doors must be closed and interior cab doors and end vestibule doors locked. Finally, don't forget to close and lock external door control panels.